right, all right. Hey, will you all please say hello to my good friend and our final speaker of the week, Mr. Justin Belt. Oh. What's good, folks? Dude. Welcome, welcome, man. Uh, I'm glad to, I, I'm, I'm glad any time we get somebody else to come be a part of this week with us because we've had, uh, we've had a really good time in here this week. Have we had a good time? I feel like we've had a good time. I love being able to bring more people into it. Uh, Justin, man, tell us uh, where are you coming in from today? So I came in from Dallas, Texas uh, this morning. Yeah. You're not the only Dallas one. Here. <laughs> You're not the Dallas only people. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where, is, that where, is that where you live? You live in Dallas? Yeah, we live in Dallas after living in Joplin for about 13 years. Yeah. Which is where we got hooked up with CIY. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, where are my 417 people at? <laughs> I got love for that's y'all, right. too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Is your phone number still 417? It is, yeah. Nice. Now we're yeah. talking. Okay, good man, good man. Uh, so, so you live there in Web City. What, what took you to Dallas? Uh, my wife um, was following a dream of hers to become a doctor. And she graduated from chiropractic school back last August. Amazing, man. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Super cool. So tell us, tell us about her. Tell us about your family a little bit then. So my wife and I, we celebrated 21 years of marriage in June, uh, June 14. Amazing. We have five kids. That's why I'm bald. We have five kids. Um, and yeah, man, we just... Busy life. Yeah, busy. busy. They keep us yeah, going. Okay. Give me the age range. What's the oldest? What's the youngest? All right, so we have 19, 15, 10, 8, and 6. Woo! Man, that's a lot. That's quite the range, dude. And I actually remembered all the ages. You did. Us. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah I'm impressed. So don't, don't ask me their names. That, <laughs> okay. That's a good question. <laughs> what do you, well, so, and what do you do, like, is there a pretty wide-ranging interest with those age ranges? Do it, or, like, are they all kind of, like, they all kind of like the same stuff, or? So I have three girls and two boys. Okay. So it goes girl, boy, boy, girl, girl. So my girls are all interested in some form of dance. Nice. Um, my oldest son, he is an athlete, football okay. track. My second son, he is hugely into anime and into oh, nice. That's yeah. cool, man. Did you say yeah. illustration and stuff? That's awesome, man. I love that, dude. Yeah. So like all kind, yeah. So a little bit of the gamut, then a little bit of all yeah. over the all over the interest board. That's cool. Um, so it, what do you love to, in Dallas, what do you do, what do you love, what do you love to do? Right now it's hot, so I love staying inside. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, amen, dude. Um, amen. Uh, so I love podcasting. Okay. Um, Wait, podcasting, not listening to, like podcasting, like doing podcasts. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have a podcast? Yeah, I've had a podcast for about a year and a half now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. What's like the nature of the podcast? So the podcast, the podcast is called the Pep Talk Pod. It's called Pep Talk. Sorry, I just recently rebranded. Um, but it is a podcast that is about uh, cheering you on and coaching you up. So I believe everybody needs a cheerleader to rah 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 tell you how great you are. But you also need a coach to tell you how to take that greatness to the next level. Okay. And so that's what I do every week with the pod. Okay. You have like a? Do you have like? Do you? Is that like a guest thing typically? You bring a lot of guests in. Everything else, or do you? Is it just like a solo effort? It's mostly solo. I have guests uh, here and there, okay. uh, but it's really the kind of thing I sit down and say, God, what do you want to tell the people today? Mm -hmm. Press record, pop it out. And you just go for it. Just go for it. Yeah. I love it, man. Weekly episodes? Weekly episodes. That's cool, man. Yep. That's, that's really cool. Uh, well, we are, I, we're going to talk about, man, we've had an incredible week. Um, we've, we've covered a lot of ground. We're going to talk a little bit more about where we're going tonight with our, or this afternoon with our final session. But before we do... You know we love to play games at Move, man. You know we do. So, can we, are you, would you like to play a game yes, with us? Let's do it. I let's thought do you it. would. I thought you would. Uh, in order to play a game, we've got um, Maddie and Cannon going to bring us out some stuff, some help. Some help. Hey, we give it up for Maddie. She's been killing it backstage all day, all, all week long. And for Cannon helping us out, bringing everything around. Okay, so this is how this game works, Justin. This is a game that we call Phone a Friend. Now, <laughs> the way... <laughs> The way this is going to work, all right, uh, is, is I have three questions that you and I are going to answer, okay, by right, and we're going to write down our answers, okay? okay. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to switch boards, and then we each get to phone a friend, and, and we have to get our friend to say the words that, we, that are written on the boards that we have without, like, saying, like, rhymes with or, you know, like that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Okay. 
If that makes sense. Okay, I'll explain a little bit more clearly as we go, but here's the deal. Okay, so let's say uh, you got a marker over there. Okay, yep. so, um, so we'll just kind of number them one, two, and three there kind of out on the side. One, two, three, like so. Okay, so question number one, what is, and you can crowdsource if you want to, or you can just, you know, however you want. What is the most majestic animal? What is the most majestic animal? All right, so. <laughs> what, what, what do we think over here? A liger. Got okay. An, an what else? Eagle, an eagle. Unicorn. A, a unicorn. Not a real animal, but are we counting that? Are we, maybe? A pegasus. Okay, <laughs> like, no, sure. I'm, a pegasus, I'm like, like an that. An eagle. A uni What's the unicorn eagle? A pegasus. It's not, but I think we're going to go with it. Anybody know how you spell that? I or you? You. We're going to go with you. You got yours? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, so, uh, what, what, what's, what's your answer? What do you got? What do you got? I went with Liger. You went with Liger? I did. Yeah. You went with, is a Liger a real? Oh, a Liger is a real thing, isn't it? Like, there are such things. I went with Pegasus, super not a real thing, um, but we're going to go with it. Hey, it's real in somebody's heart. That's right. It's real in somebody's heart. That means spoken, spoken like a true uh, podcast coach. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, okay, next question. What is the most random, like, place that you can think of? Or, or country or place or, or whatever else. Okay, so just give me a random one. Okay, I already, I, I already know mine. Um, okay, what do, you, what do you got? Mine is Miami, Oklahoma. Miami, Oklahoma, right? Yep. It, Not to be, yes. For, for reference, it's spelled Miami, but in Oklahoma East, it's pronounced Miami. Miami. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Supposedly, the original way to pronounce it is Miami. Like, that's like the, uh, that's the pr proper way. Interesting. So yeah. Florida's wrong. Gotcha. Florida, always. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, number three, okay. What is the most dangerous middle name? And I don't even know what that means, but we're going to go for it. What's the most dangerous middle name? Okay. Um, That's fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, what, what do you got? What do you got? Let, what's yours? Um, my name is Abednego. Oh, Abednego. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As in Shadrach, Meshach, and yeah. their buddy. Yeah. They named him last because he's the most dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Mine is. I actually, I played baseball. Uh, I played baseball with a kid when um, when I was little, and his middle name was Mankiller. Like that's that's true. And that's pretty dangerous sounding to me. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so. Oh, that's crazy. So now, here's how it works, okay? We're going to trade boards. Okay. Now, I have, I'm going to call somebody, okay? I'm going to call, we, 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 each get, we each get to phone a friend. And the goal is that in, we're going to put a timer up, okay? And in that timer, we have to uh, get our friend to say, I need to get them to say Liger, Miami, Oklahoma, and Abednego. <laughs> Without, with, and I can't say those words. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Do you know who you're going to call? Yep. I'm calling, okay. I'm calling my wife because she's smart. Yeah, she's smart. Yeah, no kidding. A doc, I'm going to call, uh, I'm gonna, you're going to call a doctor. I'm going to call my best friend, Austin, Ed, Austin Edson, who draws pictures for a living. So, you know, that's the same. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to see if I can't get, I'm going to see if I can't get Austin on the phone here. Hang on. Well, well, well. Okay. Hey, hey, Austin, you're on speakerphone with 1,300. I'm a good friend, so keep it together, man. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Where are we at? Dude, we are down in San Marcos, Texas at CIY Move right now. Well, boomer sooner. Boomer sooner then. <laughs> okay, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Okay. Should have known that was coming. Hey, man, how are you? You doing good? Yeah, I'm glad you called because I'm hoping this is about you owing me 10 bucks. <laughs> okay, get out of here. Okay. <laughs> 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 All 
<laughs> okay. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I'm with I'm with our good buddy Justin Belt. We're playing a game. Okay. Justin has given me three random words that I need to get you to say, um, and and you need to say them in a hurry. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna start a timer. I'm gonna try to describe these to you really fast, and I need you uh, to say them. I'm gonna try to do it without like rhyming or anything else. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's a like catchphrase. Yeah. Let's. Yeah. Catchphrase. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, what does the winner get? What do, like, what do I get? Ten bucks. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Okay, we ready? Do we have, like, a timer? Do we have a timer? Okay, 60 seconds on the clock, and it's going. Okay, so the first one is the, um, the picture that Napoleon Dynamite draws, the animal that he draws in the movie. Do you remember that? Uh, oh, it's a liger. Nice. Okay. Um, the next one is there's a, ta- there's a city in Florida um, that's Wakanda. down. What? Nothing, go. Okay, um, that's down there, it's on the coast, and, um, and Will Smith has a song about it. Uh, Miami. Right, now, the, now the, the equivalent of that, but in the state where your favorite college football team is from. Miami. There no, it is, okay, great. Um, okay, now, on, now what about, what, what about um, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and... Come on. A billy goat. A what? Did you say a billy goat? He said a billy goat. Okay. Uh, a billy goat. <laughs> uh, that has to be how 12-year-old Austin remembers that. Come on. Do you remember? The, do you know the name? <laughs> a billy goat. <laughs> a billy goat. That's it. Nice job, Austin. Hey, everybody give Austin, Austin a hand. Okay. Got all three. Booyah. Oh, that's amazing. Nice job, bro. I love you. I owe you 10 bucks. Talk to you later. All right. Hey, the pharmacist said he cannot bring you your diarrhea medicine in Texas. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I need new friends. Okay. <laughs> I I I went too easy. Like, <laughs> all right, I am making my phone call. Hello. Hey, Doctor Wife. <laughs> Hi. You speak up. Oh, yes. I said hi. Hey, um, I'm surrounded by, like, a lot of new friends. Can you say hey to everybody? Hi, everyone. I told them that you'd recently graduated, and they all cheered for you, so you should feel really good right now. That's right. <laughs> okay, so we're playing a game, me and, me and my boy Lane, and he, we answered three questions, and you have to guess his answers. I'm going to give you... The best clues I can, because I think I got set up. But anyway, <laughs> all right. So I'm going to describe an animal to you that flies and is a very popular flying equestrian. A pegasus? Oh! <laughs> I told y'all my wife was smart. Man. OK. So the next one is, I don't even know how to describe this one. Um, So this is a type of monster and they steal gold. It's a monster that likes to steal gold. Hmm. I'm stuck. I mean, uh, a troll or a leprechaun? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay, let, let's, 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 uh, oh gosh. Let's get to number three. Uh, somebody who unalives, uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> we, it, it was all my fault. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you'll still let me in the house when I get home. I'm sorry. Oh my goodness. Say bye-bye, babe. Oh, that's it? That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love you. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Hey, let's give man. Let's thank for our friends. That's amazing. Those were hard ones, dude. <laughs> Those were so hard. Goblin State Park. I think it's in Utah. Isn't that in Utah? Is, are Utah friends in here? I can't. I think Goblin State Park is is that is 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 in Utah or something like that. Anyway. You've been there? No, but oh. it feels random. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know. Uh, awesome, man. Well, dude, thanks for playing. Uh, totally appreciate it. Okay. I talked about, um, I said we've had a great week and we have. I said we were going to like dive in. We're not done yet. 
We're not done with the week yet. We got more to get to. So can you give me just like a snapshot, two or three uh, sentences uh, that would help us uh, know where we're going today? Yes. Um, here's my snapshot. Connection to Jesus helps us keep up with Jesus. Connection to Jesus helps us keep up with Jesus. Dude, that's so good. As we're talking about walking pace yeah. with Jesus, yeah. then that's going to be the key, isn't it? Oh, dude, I love that, dude. That's awesome. Catchy, sticky. I love it. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much um, for um, one more opportunity this week to um, be just immersed in your word and in your truth. God, I pray that you would help us, please, God, to... Um, I, I, I pray that you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, would reveal things to us and would place things on our hearts as your son Justin speaks. And God, we would cling to those things and they would take deep, deep root within our hearts, God, so that we would walk out of here forever changed, never the same as we keep pace with you for the rest of our lives. Amen. Amen. So this is fun. Hey, have y'all had a good time this week? I don't believe you. That was kind of weak. That was kind of weak sauce. Say what? Believe you? So I'm gonna ask again. Have y'all had a good time this week? Now I believe you. All right. Uh, I want to start off with a question. How many soccer players do I have in the crowd? Yeah, soccer players make some noise? Okay. So I have, I have a soccer story for you. Um, so in high school, I tried out for the soccer team. Now, I say tried out, and I say that loosely because in my high school, if you showed up for the practices, they basically gave you a uniform. Um, now, some context. Justin don't like to run at all. Amen. Double amen. And so the question becomes, uh, why, why was Justin, who does not like to run, out on the field trying out for the soccer team? A girl. Which is the reason why most boys do stupidish things. Amen? Amen. All right. So now, um, I'm, I'm out here on this field. And I remember uh, this, it was the second of the down and back. Um, I, I crawl off of the field and I stuff my lungs back into my chest where they had spilled out uh, about halfway through the first down and back. Um, and I forgot all about the girl that I thought that I liked. Matter of fact, I never called her again. Um, I never returned a message or anything because, nope, it, nope. It just wasn't happening. It, it wasn't happening. But, but here's the thing, though. We weren't, she and I, we weren't connected enough for me to endure the hardship of soccer. Like, we didn't have that connection. Like, if it was for my wife, oh, yeah, I'd go, I'd go down and back, down and back, because we're, we're connected in that way. But this girl in high school, this random girl in high school, um, we didn't have that, that connection and so because we didn't have that connection, I couldn't keep up with uh, the pace that, that, that soccer required of me. And here, here's the thing. Connection counts. And that is an important thing. Connection counts. And it is, it is an integral part of us keeping the pace that is set for us in life. But let's talk about what pace is because I want to give you a couple of, def of definitions. Pace is defined as a continuous and consistent speed. Another definition defines pace as a rate of movement. So for the purpose of our time together here, uh, pace is something that's not too slow, it's not too fast, but rather keeping with an established, continuous, and consistent rate of movement. But now the question becomes, what do pace and connectedness have to do with one another? So for that, we're going to go to the Word of God. We're going to look at John chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 4 through 10. And in these verses, Jesus is going to explain to us some things about 
being connected and the implications for that connectedness across our lives. Now, before we read, there's going to be a word that you see in here that will appear a lot. And after we're done, I'm going to see if you were paying attention because I'm going to ask you what that word is. Are we ready for the word? All right, starting at verse 4. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Now, what is the word that you heard repeatedly in that passage of Scripture? Say it again. Ah, y'all are so smart. I love y'all already. Remain. That word is remain. And the implication here is that when we remain connected to the vine, then we are fruitful, the vine being Jesus. Now, I think this is really, really cool uh, because I love science. I, science didn't love me back, okay? Uh, my grades would bear that out, but I love science. And when I think about this whole idea of remaining connected to the vine, I think about uh, DNA. I think about genetics, Gregor Mendel, heredity, alleles, the Punnett square, all that kind of things because we know that DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, has a great bearing in the traits that are inherent within us. So, like, I don't have a picture of my kids, but if I were to show you a picture of my kids combined with myself and my wife, you would see that they are definitely our kids, okay? Even though I tell them they're adopted, you can look at them and you can see that they, they, they belong to us. And the same thing is true in, in plants. We're talking about vines and branches. In botany, we see that fruit and branches, they receive genetic material from the vine or the tree that they spawn from. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying to you is that just as a tree with roots has an established pace of growth for it, once the branches start sprouting off from that tree, guess what? The branches also inherit that pace of growth and development. So if Jesus is saying that he is the vine and you are the branches, what does that mean for you? That means that Jesus already has an established pace for your life. That means that Jesus already has an established development of your purpose and a revelation of your purpose and what you are to do with your life. It's already in there. Like it's, it, it's nothing that you have to go to Walmart and try to purchase from the store. It's not at Costco because Costco has everything, but Costco does not have your purpose. Costco does not have your pace. It's already within you because you are in Christ. But here's the kicker. You have to choose to remain connected to the vine. And it's important that you remember that it's a choice. Because just like you can choose to be connected, you can also choose to disconnect. Let's look at verse 6 again. Verse 6 says, Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. So here's what Jesus says. He says that any branch that does not remain connected to me withers. Y'all, a disconnected branch does not bear fruit. Or if it bears fruit, that fruit quickly withers and dies. Why? Because the vine, the tree, holds the life-giving attributes that keeps that branch going and that allows it to be fruitful. So the moment that that branch disconnects, that, that access to the life, that access to the source material, it, it, it's disconnected. 
Therefore, our only avenue to being fruitful in this life is by remaining connected to Jesus, even as Jesus is connected to God. And when you choose to be connected, when you choose to remain connected, what you're saying is, I am choosing your pace, Jesus, rather than my pace. Now, I think about a story in the Bible. There was a young man who, who is going to illustrate for us what it looks like when you want to disconnect from the vine rather than staying connected. And that is in the story, the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 16. So let's look at that real quick. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. See, see this is a story of someone who did not want to live according to the pacing that had been prescribed. He chose to disconnect. Do you see it? See, he knew that one day he would have access to a lot of money, to a lot of land, and because he knew that one day I'm going to be rich, he forgot about the fact that he was already rich because he was the father's son. But he wanted to go off and he wanted to establish his own pace of living, so he got the money, and he dipped. Deuces, Dad. And then he went out into the world, and as he disconnected himself from his father, his pace of life got off track with what it was intended. See, because the younger son no longer wanted to live according to the established plan of the vine, his pace of life led to an erosion of who he was created to be and what he was created to have. And see, you've heard this today. God's pace is slow and steady, or at least it feels that way. I know it felt that way to me when I was sitting in your, when I was sitting where you're sitting. Matter of fact, some days it still feels that way to me. Matter of fact, I remember 21 years ago uh, when God called me into ministry and into uh, pastorship. I've always felt the call to pastorship since I was 21, 22 years old. Now I remember uh, I had an encounter with God. And he revealed to me kind of what that purpose was. But my pace was like, ah, oh, okay. So but basically, God, what you're saying is within three to six years, uh, my wife and I will have a church. We will be serving our community. We'll be building your kingdom. We'll be winning souls to Christ in three to six years. Guess what? Three to six years came, nothing. My 30s came, nothing. I'm 43 years old now. Still nothing. And, and in that time, I have gone through moments where I've been so frustrated with God's pace that I didn't even want to pray. I didn't want to talk to him about it because my thing was, God, why do I have to abide by your pace? Why do I have to do this the way that you want it? You've called me to do it. Can I have it now? It's my purpose. I want it now. Just like the prodigal son, it's my money. I want it now. It's like, it's, it's it's my purpose. It's my calling, God. I want it now. Matter of fact, 11 years ago, God told my wife and I that we would be, that he wanted to use us at some point to plant a church. It's 11 years later, and that still has not happened. God's pace. God's pace is slow, and his pace is steady, and his pace is to allow you to have good fruit, but also lasting fruit. If God would have allowed us to pastor a church, you know, three to six years after he called us into ministry, I don't think that church would still be in existence because we weren't ready. If he would have allowed us to plant a church uh, that 11 years ago, I don't think that church would have been in existence today because we weren't ready. God's pace is slow and steady, and I'm going to say it again. It is to help you produce good fruit. And lasting fruit. You don't, you get, I, nobody here would give somebody an apple knowing that it was filled with worms. 
And when we try to speed up the pace, then the fruit that we are intended to bear, it can become mutated and it, and it, and it can become rotten. See, God's pace is designed to help you love a world that is going to hate you because you love God. God's pace is designed to give you the courage to speak words of life in the middle of situations that would normally bring death. God's pace is designed to help you bring, be a hope bringer into the lives of people who have lost all measures of hope. It's in John 15, 18, uh, 18 through 20. Jesus says, if they hated me, guess what? They're going to hate you too. But the pace of life that God wants to establish in your lives is such that when they hate you, and they will, you can still say, God bless you. I love you. You may not want me to pray for you now, but I'll, I'll pray for you in my private time. That's what allowing the pace of God to be established in your life, that's the fruit that that brings. And see, here's what I know. It is easy to do. It is easy to abide by God's pace when you have been here for a week. You are in an incubator of just Jesus loving on me. I'm loving on Jesus. This is just amazing. I'm jumping up and down during worship. I'm high-fiving my new best friend from the church that I've never heard of before. This is all just beautiful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. It's beautiful because you've been establishing a, a rhythm, right? You've learned uh, to you've learned to posture yourself, uh, to pause. You've learned to to uh, embrace a posture. You've learned about God's presence and His purpose that you would live your life for Him and with others. And today you've been learning about a plan, and every day it's been that same rhythm: boom, 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 boom. It's programmed. But when you go home. And matter of fact, maybe even on your way home, what's going to happen is that the world's plans for you are going to begin to make themselves known again. The noise that you're able to block out and move, that noise begins to turn the volume up when you're on your way home. When you're going back into a situation that may not be the best situation for you. And so what happens then when you get home? And the stress that you left, it meets you at the front door. What happens to that rhythm then? What happens to pausing and posturing and God's presence and God's purpose and the pace? What happens when your friends want to invite you to do things that are inappropriate? What happens when you are back at school in the fall and you're sitting with people who are making fun of the people who don't sit at the cool kids' table? What happens when you go back home and a hopeless situation looks that much more hopeless? What do you do? You have to have a plan for how to stay connected. And I have a plan for you. It's in the Word of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Listen, the way that we stay on pace with Jesus is by keeping our eyes on him. Life is a race. I learned that more and more every day of my life. Even for someone that, like me who hates to run, I understand that every day I'm running at some kind of a pace. But see, the beautiful thing is that Jesus has already established the pace of life for us. He's established a pace that he wants you to run at. So as long as I keep my eyes on Jesus and match his pace, I'm good. But what happens? We're running. We're following Jesus and everything is good. Jesus' pace 
we're keeping pace with him. He's our pace setter. It's good. I'm praying every day. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Bible study. I'm talking with my youth pastor, my youth sponsor. I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm serving in youth ministry. I'm serving with the kids. Awesome. My pace of life is great. Then I turn to the left and I look and I see my friend who's running at a slightly different pace, a little bit faster. Oh, my gosh. Now they're getting ahead of me. I can't let them get ahead of me. They're not more saved than I am. They don't know Jesus as well as, well as I do. So now guess what? Instead of me looking at Jesus, who is uh, my pace setter, now I'm looking at my friend and I'm so distracted. And I begin to adopt their pace which is not my pace, because we're all still following Jesus, but just because I'm following Jesus and you're following Jesus, that does not mean that our pace is going to be the exact same. That doesn't mean that just because all of us came here to move and we all got the same Jesus, that does not mean that all of you are going to see the revelation of his will for your life in just this moment. Some of you will, but some of you will have to wait five years. Some of you will have to wait 10 years. Some of you may have to wait three months. Some of you may have to wait five minutes and then boom, you know it. But here's, y'all, you cannot judge somebody else's pace and derive an assumption for whether God has called you or not. That's not the way that it works. If we're following after Jesus and he is our pace setter, we trust him with the pace. And see, my challenge to you is this. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't care about your friend group. And this sounds really harsh, but I have to say it. I don't care how tightly your friend group is. Jesus is not calling each of you to run the same race. He's not calling you and your significant other to run the same race. He's not calling you and your parents to run the same race at the same pace. When you begin to understand that Jesus loves you enough to establish an individualized pace of life for you, then you understand all the more how much he loves you and how much he has considered you. So I want to tell you about a cool experience that I had. So my oldest daughter, Kayla, she was accepted into a dance intensive in New York City, Manhattan, uh, at the beginning of June. And so I went up there with her to help her get settled in, and we had to get on the subway. Hated it. It was horrible. It was so bad. Because we got lost, and we had her luggage, and her luggage was big and bulky, and some of the wheels on the luggage broke, so I'm pulling, you know, like, 50-pound luggage up the stairs, then downstairs to another train. It was just horrible. It was horrible. But as I was thinking about this message, and I was praying for you all, actually, God showed me something so cool. So cool. So, we're on the subway, and it's going. And, and I began to think about this fact, that before the subways were even a thing, engineers and researchers and all these different people came together and said, yo, let's establish a form of transportation that's safe, that is efficient, that will get people where they need to go. Okay, boom. Okay, let's do this underground subway train system. Okay, with multiple trains, multiple cars running, et cetera, et cetera. Beautiful. What do we have to think about with that? Okay, we have to, uh, what is the average rate of speed? How many trains can we run on this track? Uh, what does the setup need to look like so that everybody's safe? They thought everything through so that by the time I got on the train with 100 pounds of luggage, they knew that if they followed the steps, they would get me to the safe place at the best time. It does not matter how much I bang on the window and say, hey, 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 can you speed this train up? The engineer ain't going to listen to me. Why? Because I don't know what's best. They have the science. They have the research. And basically, by me hopping on their train, I am agreeing that they know what's best. God does not ask you to always agree with his pace. But he does ask you to trust 
that his pace is the best thing for your life. Why? Because God has already seen the way that your life plays out. He's in your past. He's in your present. He's also in your future. He is everywhere. He knows every mistake that you're going to make. He knows every branching decision that you're going to make because he's been there. And while he's trying to direct you into these pathways to stay connected to him and to stay on pace, a lot of times we're fighting against him because we want something faster. You don't have to agree, but you do have to trust that because God is omnipresent, he knows the best thing for you. And, and I want to tell you right now, God so wants you to trust him. He wants to spend time with you. He wants you to want to spend time with him, not because you want something, but because he's God. And because he's calling you, he's calling all of you. He's calling the one who came here with your faith on 10. But he's also calling the one who came here with your faith on zero or your faith in the negative. He's, he's calling to the one who came here feeling accepted, but also to the one who came here feeling like the scum of the earth. No matter how you came, no matter how you come, no matter how you sit here right now, as you listen or not to this message, Jesus is calling you. He's calling you into connection. He's calling you to remain connected. He's calling you to keep him at the center of your life. Israel Houghton, an incredible worship leader and songwriter, he, he wrote a song uh, that has often been the prayer of my heart called Jesus at the Center. Uh, and it's a song that asks Jesus to help us to be intentional about keeping him at the center of our lives, of our churches, of our desires, of all of these different things. And as I was driving down, as I was driving down a day, um, people probably thought that I was crazy because I'm singing this song at the top of my lungs. Because even as I'm speaking to you, God is speaking to me. Because there are areas in my life where maybe Jesus has not been the center. And so my, my prayer was that, would you please help me to recenter everything around you. Would you please help me? Because I know me. But God also knows me. And the only way that we can keep pace with Jesus is by remaining connected. And so I changed one of the verses to this song to kind of fit where we are as I get ready to close. And the, the verse is on the screen right now. <clears throat> and it just says this. Jesus be the center of my life. Jesus be the center of my life. Help me to keep your pace. As I run this race toward you, Jesus, Jesus, nothing else. Wait, 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 listen, listen, listen to this part, because this is the part about remaining connected. It says, nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you at the center of it all. The center of it all. You have to decide before you leave here. Don't, don't, don't leave your seat. Don't leave this arena. Don't leave this campus without having a plan to keep Jesus at the center of your life. You can't afford to. None of us can. Trust 
his pace because he will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's pray.